So if I get my timing right, this will be the second vlog of this week, which I'm not planning on making a common thing. But uh, this last weekend, I had a lot of ideas that I was sharing um, and wanted to get those up on the channel. Also, I'm going to Connecting Things right now. It meets in the lab in Costa Mesa. So Connecting Things, you guys should check it out if you're in Orange County. It's an awesome meetup of creatives that meets once a month. It started off as just coffee and donuts with some friends. Now it's this huge event. So I want to document it and share it with you guys. Uh, hopefully we can talk to some people. Question. This is embarrassing. You ever been scared? You had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, me too. Honestly perplexed. I've lied, and so have you, Christians. Lying. Like you never had questions. Like you never had a moment when your inner dialogues were all of a sudden in third person. Like, are you really buying this? You're lying. Like your eyes are 100% always satisfied by your spouse, and you don't need accountability, neither of which is biblical. So this poem is titled, I love y'all. For real. <laughs> I love y'all. For real. But sometimes you make me feel dumb. Like the last time we met and she read her piece of poetry and everybody was impressed except me. I wasn't hating. I just didn't comprehend it. But I pretended like I did because I didn't want to seem slow. You know, being only. Or well, like my phone rings and it's somebody black and y'all laugh because my dialect is just so darn cute or hilarious or whatever you think it is. And let me call you back, kid. Excuse me, miss, but Sambo want to know what be so mixed will show humorous. If anything, you should be amused by the way I talk to you. But still, like I said, I love y'all for real. But sometimes you make me feel dumb. So in my poetry, I front like my vocabulary is enormous. The thesaurus is my best friend, and half the time, I forget what words mean after I use them. But I gotta keep up with the Joneses, my fellow poets, my friends. Your intelligence extends far beyond the fields of my cotton, ball, brain. See, sometimes I'm ashamed because I'm black and I ain't as brainiac as y'all. Or, I have not been blessed with the same level of intellect as the rest of you. Furthermore, due to my ethnicity, I feel the pressure to prove that I'm equally proficient at poetic composition. And I'm not accusing you of prejudice, however, such beliefs are often held subconsciously. Therefore, I seem to write so eloquently that all forms of bigotry, open and unknown, are blown to hell. But I know I never will. And that kills me. Because I love y'all. For real. But sometimes, you make me feel dumb. Science still can't explain yawning. Like you never took your worldview to its furthest conclusions. That if human behavior is just what protoplasm does at this temperature, then there was no... Uh, behind me is a uh, beautiful Canyon Lake, a little private community in Riverside County, Southern California, hour north of San Diego, about two hours from LA. I grew up here and went to college out here met my wife out here, a lot of my family's friends are out here, and it seems, always feels like home when I come back to this area, uh, but it's actually been a long time since we've actually lived here as we've kind of been traveling around, moving for work, and this last week has just been very weird for me, being here and seeing how some things have completely changed, and how some things haven't changed at all. Coming, um, and I went to church, it's a great time, it was great to see everyone that I've seen for a long time, and I've talked about this before, I grew up in the church, but coming back to this church, I felt like a, like someone that was new to the whole church idea in general. Um, I feel like my experiences in the Bay Area, experiences everywhere else I've been, have really changed the way I think about church. It's been really hard. I think that there's a way that any organization, be it an old cable company or be it a religious organization, sets up a process, follows that process, it works well, but it never evolves. So one of the things that I've been thinking about and can't really get out of my head are some conversations that I was listening to on the Liturgist podcast. Um, it's Michael Gunger, who's an amazing musician, 
and this guy, Science Mike, who is also um, an author, speaker, um, and podcaster. They have this um, very well done podcast, uh, and they have a, a lot of smart people on it, and have a real artful way of talking about things um, on the podcasting platform. Their most recent episode, they had uh, Propaganda, who's a, a poet, spoken word, um, hip hop artist, um, and another musician, I forget his name. I'll put everything below. Um, regardless, they're talking about kind of racism in America and black versus white, um, that con constant narrative that we've seen in the news. Um, I've seen it a lot in tech with diversity. And it was the first conversation for me being a privileged white male that really framed the discussion in a way that I could actually change the way I think and grow as, as a person of this country. A lot of their narrative wasn't just about like black versus white and, you know, Black Lives Matter and those things. It was really challenging the way that the dominant parties or the people holding power, the responsibility in the, the ways that that can translate into oppression or racism. And, and there was, there's this constant narrative that from that and other things where I'm realizing that um, stagnation like this nasty water around me is very dangerous. So there was another uh, piece of content. It was uh, one of the Ask Gary V shows uh, from Gary Vaynerchuk. And he talked to this amazing guy. He was the CEO, Bob Wright, um, CEO of NBC, I believe, um, and also created the nonprofit Autism Speaks. I'll link that video as well. Uh, but they were kind of talking about raising money for uh, nonprofits, but they started talking about innovation of like media platforms and old versus new and how those things are received. And that, again, was one thing about like perspective and openness to change. I think that, that this aligns as well in the business market, like whether it's taxi cab versus Uber or cable versus Netflix, you constantly see older ways and constructs being challenged by new ideas, be them innovations or different ways of thinking. And I feel like there's a big tension there that I am very sensitive to. And I, I'm only saying any of this because I don't have a strong perspective that I want people to believe. I, I'm just very sensitive and scared of becoming stagnant. I do never want to be the old guy fighting for the old thing. I think my dad's a good example of this. He's always been very open to new ideas and understanding the ways that whether it's a new generation or a new business model or a new church, whatever it is, being open to new ways of thinking, I think is, I think it's critical to being relevant. And I don't want to ever become irrelevant um, as a creative, as a dad, as just a human on this earth. And so I just wanted to share that. I don't know what that means. It's just been something like all these pieces of content all kind of um, resonated and aligned in a way that was very su substantial for me. Um, just want to share that with you guys. So hopefully it means something. And I think if there's no evolution, that's very dangerous. I feel like I've grown and I've changed as, so as our culture has. And it's been very weird to see, say that. We're trying to figure out a way to say this and not be like insulting. Okay, so I don't know how to say this. I, I get very weird about talking about church stuff on this vlog. It's a big part of my history. It's a big part of who I am. But I know that it's a, like a pretty weird place to be, just like politics. And I don't know how to say this. I, I don't think that this morning going to church, I feel that that church is irrelevant. My old church that I'm from. I think what I notice today is that my perspectives of living different places and knowing different people and kind of stretching myself has brought in my perspective to realize that that is that is a stagnant path and not that it's bad it's just stagnant um and i think that i fear that personally just like i don't think cable's bad i think that that model of media distribution is stagnant it's not innovating in the same way that netflix or even youtube and snapchat are and so i think that's kind of the the core thing i'm i've been processing is the value of perspective and the, the danger of being stagnant. And it's kind of apropos, if that's the word. It's so poignant because I'm sitting here and all I can see is this nasty, nasty stagnant water. Like how disgusting is that? This nasty water that doesn't move 
it just gets gross. And that's the last, the last damn thing I want to be. No idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, me too. Me too. Forgive me for asking. Forgive me.